Have you ever been influenced by someone? Well, someone laughed. <laughs> well, either a good influence or maybe a not so good influence. Anyone? Anyone? No? No? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, a lot of you, yes. I think we can all say that at some point in our lives, maybe right this moment, in this moment, we're being influenced by someone. Hopefully it's Jesus right now, okay? Um, I remember growing up, I was maybe 10, year, 10 years old, and I just moved in down the street from this kid, and his name was James. That's his real name. I'm not trying to protect him. <laughs> his name was James, and he was a bad influence on me. <laughs> like a really bad influence. Like I just remember he was always getting me into trouble all the time. Um, he, he was always telling me, well, your parent, like, I know your parents said that, but what they really meant was this. Like, let's just go do it, you know? Or, or you know, well, what, it, it's not hurting anything. He taught me a lot of new words that I didn't know, that I didn't know already. Yeah, he did. So I, I've expanded my vocabulary through James. Um, but the culminate, yeah, he was always getting me into trouble. Like, he really, yeah, anyway. Um, but the culmination of my experience, my influence, um, or being under the influence of James, was one day we were sitting on the school bus, going, going to school, and I remember the seat we were in. It was 4B, fourth from the, fourth from the front, it was on the right-hand side, 4B. I remember it vividly, and now you'll understand, you'll understand why in a minute. And it was because as I was sitting next to him, riding to school, James just gets this, like, glitter in his eye, this, like, gleam in his eye, and he pulls out a pencil, and he says, hey, watch this, and he stabs the seat. You know, those, in, those, in, the, in the buses, they have those, like, leather seats, the leather upholstery, so it make, you, you push it, and it goes, pop, real satisfying pop. He's like, did you see that? Watch this. Pop, 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 pop. And he looks at me, and he says, do you want to try? And I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, no, where am I? What is this universe? What are we doing? Like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> this is horrible. You know, like, I was a good little, I was a good kid. And, and it's like, no, I don't want anything to do with this. But he just said, come on, you know, you want to do it. And I just reached out and I grabbed the pencil. And it felt good. <laughs> And I just went, oh, pow, 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 pow. The back of this seat looked like the car had just been through like a drive-by, okay? Like it was, it was like a cheese grater, a Swiss cheese full of holes. It was terrible. Like I'm ashamed, okay? I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not telling you this to brag or anything. I'm ashamed of myself at 10 years old doing property damage to a public school bus, Okay? horrible. He was a terrible influence on me. And I found out that because about three weeks later, guess who gets called into the principal's office? Because for some reason, I guess if you sit in the same seat every single day on your way to school, they're going to know who it was. <laughs> and so they, they call me into the principal off, principal's office, and I see across from the principal is James and my bus driver. And they light into me and James. And we're in so much trouble. Like, why would you do this? You caused so much damage. It took me so long to have to repair it with, like, the, the upholstery repair stuff. It was hundreds of dollars of repairs we had to do to this seat just because you wanted to stab it with a pencil. Oh, we got in trouble. We got in trouble. But I remember that was not the end of the meeting because at the end of the meeting, they said, okay, James, you can kind of step out for a moment. And then, so James stepped out of, the, out of the room, and my bus driver and my principal looked at me and said, Christian, you are a good kid. You should not be hanging out with James. He is a bad influence on you. You're getting, I'm like, I, they weren't letting me off the hook. I was still in trouble. But they were telling me, I know you were influenced by this kid, and I know you can be better. Go find another friend. Like, he is not good for you. And I remember walking out of that meeting, and, like, my life changed. Like, I was like, dude, go away from me. Like, I don't want anything to do with you. Get me in trouble. <laughs> like, and I really, I really, like, changed my friends that day. 
I listened, I listened to them. Man, like, yeah, he was a bad influence on me. And, like, from that day forward, like, I remember that lesson. God teaches us lessons these, this, these ways, you know. And so I went, I don't think I've ever, like, had a friend like that again. I've gone through my life, middle school, high school, college, et cetera, and I've purposefully chosen friends and companions who were good influences on me because I did not want to go through that again. Like, Pastor Garen read in Proverbs the other, the last week, it says, oh, um, walk with the wise and become wise. Walk with, like, walk with the foolish and get into trouble. That's true. That's really true. So I've had a lot of good influences in my life, too, though, since that point. I remember in college, my best friend, he's still my best friend, he was the best man at my wedding, even, um, his name is Alan, and he was such a good influence on me. He was a Catholic, I was a Protestant, like, and we would, t- we would just talk about God for hours, and we disagreed on things. Like, he prayed to Mary, he had like a rosary and, and everything, I don't do that, but we would, he, would, he would explain to me the why. He would explain to me the how. He would explain, this is why we do this in our church. And I'd explain, well, this is why we do this in our, in our church. And I'll tell you, he taught me things about the reverence of God, bowing down to God, saying, God, you are greater than me, that I would have never learned before. Like, I was raised almost like Catholics, you know. But it's not true. You know, there's a lot of revival going on in the Catholics right now. It's not what my sermon's about, but it's true. And he is a spirit-filled Catholic. He, I believe he's going to heaven. Like, he knows Jesus better than some of us probably, right? And so he taught me things, and I taught him things, and I'm better for it. When I told him, hey, you know, I think I want to be a pastor, like a Protestant pastor. In his denomination, like, if you're married, you can't be a pastor. You can't be a priest. And he encouraged me in that. He said, you should do it. This is what God is calling to, he, to you to. He prayed for me. He encouraged me. He spurred me on to good works. He was a good influence on my life, and he still is. I still talk to him occasionally. We talk about our wives and our kids and our, um, our spiritual lives. He's still like my best friend. So I've had bad influences in my life, but I've also had very, very good ones. Through him, I, I grew closer to Jesus. Through him, I, like, I, I don't think I would be standing here if it weren't for Alan, encouraging me and causing me to ask the hard questions. Why do you believe that? I don't know. I guess it's just what I was taught. Well, why? What does that mean to you? Deep, dive, dive, he encouraged me to dive deeper into the Bible and learn more for myself. <sighs> we all have people in our lives who influence us. Parents, friends, family, teachers, social media, what are they called? Influencers. We have people on the phone that we watch and we're like, yeah, I want to do that. Wow, that's dumb. Like, no. We have people in our lives who influence us for better or for worse. And here's the deal. The people we allow to influence us, notice how I said the people we allow, the people we allow to influence us have a huge impact on who we become. It's partially because of Alan's influence that I'm even standing here today. Can you imagine if, like, I had kept going with James through middle school and high school, maybe even college? I wouldn't be your pastor right now. I would be your prayer request. Like, I would be so off the deep end, Lord knows where I would have gone if I hadn't gotten that course correction. The people in our lives have a profound influence on who we become. The crowd you choose the friends you follow, the spouse you select, affects and directs your life. The crowd you choose affects and directs your life for better or for worse. There's no escaping it. And you all know it's true. Um, We're going to be reading some Proverbs today. And Pastor Garen was talking earlier about how sometimes in in God's kingdom, it seems like it's almost backwards. It's like... um, the more you give, the more you get back. Like, be stingy, lose everything. Be generous, get more and more and more. That's true. But there's also some Proverbs that just make sense. Like, you can follow these easily, you know? So this is what Proverbs has to say. Proverbs 12, verse 26, says, The righteous choose their friends carefully. 
with care, with intention. But the way of the wicked leads them astray. And then chapter 13, verse 20, it says, Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get into trouble. And I'm just reminded of me sitting on that bus, stabbing that thing. Associate with fools. Get into trouble. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now, I want, like, let's talk about that. Like, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to stab the bus over and over like a mass murderer serial killer. I didn't want to do it, but I did. Why? Was it because of peer pressure? Was it because I wanted to be cool? Was it because I wanted to stick it to the man, like the institution, the system, public schools always getting me down? Is that why I did it? No! (laughs) It's not. Maybe that's why you would have done it, but I don't know. That was an interesting response from you. Uh, the the reason I did it wasn't because of peer pressure, wasn't because I wanted to be cool, wasn't because I had like an institutional problem. The reason I did it was simply because my friend did it. He did it first. And as humans, we naturally do what our friends do. Naturally. Isn't that true? Humans are desperate for connection with one another. We are desperate for shared experiences. We want to look at our friend and say, hey, remember when we did that? Remember when we did that? Let's go do this together. Let's go have fun together. Let's go, you know, it could be, it's not always negative. It could be positive. Let's go hike that mountain together. Let's go mountain biking. Let's, um, let's go to the concert together. We're desperate for these shared experiences because we want to feel connection with other people. And that's not bad. That's a good thing. God created us this way. He created us with like a longing in our heart. It's not, it's not good for man to be alone, it says. That's why in the beginning, God created Adam. Adam said, I'm, I'm alone. And God said, it's not good. So he created all of the animals to be friends to Adam. And Adam still said, it's not enough. It's not enough for me to just have a relationship with all these animals. I need someone who's like me, another human. And so God took the rib from his side and made woman out of it. And it, he, he looks at her for the first time. And it's the first poem in the Bible, the first poem of all time. And he says, look, like, behold, you know, (laughs) here is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I have someone who I can have an intimate, personal connection with. This is my wife, my spouse. And it's not just wives, it's not just wives, it's not just husbands, but it's, it's friends, it's relationships, it's co-workers. We are meant to have these positive relationships with each other because we're better together. We're better together. And I love how in that Genesis passage, it says that, you know, Adam is lonely. And so it, it's, we, we translate it as so God takes his rib, right? The Hebrew word is he takes his side, like his side. He takes a chunk of him, whatever it is, a part of here, and separates him. So now that he is incomplete, right? He is incomplete without that better half, without that other half. Lord knows what we looked like before. I don't know. But you know what I mean? So it's only when the two come together, when, when humans come together to be in relationship, and it's, this is typified in marriage, a man and a woman coming together, that they become complete. They become the complete helper of God, right? And it's the same thing for friendships. We have a a desire in our heart, a, a yearning for this close personal relationship with each other. We are better together. And I can't tell you how many times in my life, like, my interests have changed depending on who my friends were. Like, I'm so desperate for these personal relationships, for these shared experiences, that, like, my interests change. I remember in middle school, this may blow your mind, okay? In middle school, I hung out with the rodeo kids. Like, yeah, isn't that that crazy? Like, the kids who were, like, into 4-H, who were into, like, horse riding and things, and I learned how to ride a horse. I can ride a horse. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I can ride a horse. I I didn't want to learn how to ride a horse. Honestly, they're scary. I don't really like riding horses, but I learned how to ride a horse. 
So I did that, and I got to hang out with them because I wanted to have, I, I would sit at the lunch table. You know, these kids are 12, 13 years old, and they'd be saying things like, you know, this weekend I went eight seconds with old Mac. You know, <laughs> like, you know, like, like they're, they're riding bulls. Like, what? I wanted to know what that meant. What did that mean? You know? <laughs> And so I'd start, like, learning about it, like, looking it up on the internet. What does it mean to go eight seconds with old Mac, you know? <laughs> but I, you know, I, I altered my life so that I would fit in, and we all do that. In high school, I started hanging out with the geeks, the nerds, and the amount of time I spent on video games skyrocketed. I wanted to go to the store and get that video game so I could know what they were talking about. I wanted to have that experience. This game was so cool. Oh, my gosh. Da, 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 da. I'm still recovering from this. And then in, in college, God has a real sense of humor. He put me, my roommate was a rock climber. And I remember the first time Kevin invited me to go rock climbing, I just looked at him like, why would I want to climb a rock? <laughs> like, what's there to gain? You know, <laughs> But by the end of the year, I had those special shoes that were super tight, and they, they hurt your feet so bad. I had those special shoes. I had that little pouch with the chalk, the chalk in it. I was good by the end of the year. Like, I was doing it every week, rock climbing. I've never looked at a rock again. Never. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now you know a little bit more about me. There you go. I didn't want to do any of those things. I especially didn't want to climb a rock, and I really didn't want to ride a horse. I'm sorry. Like, I like looking at horses. I can get, I can get with, like, trail riding. But once they start going fast, I get so scared. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly and Jerry are, li are like, looking at me like... <laughs> they raise horses. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, I lost a little respect with them. <laughs> You got to do what you got to do. I didn't want to do any of these things, but I did because my friends were doing it. I really didn't have a choice. And I'm not trying to be a victim here. You know, like, I didn't have a choice. Like, I'm, I, like if this just happened to me, like, it's just because I was running with the wrong crowd, you know. I, I'm not trying to be a victim. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to drive at a bigger point. And the point is this. The choice you make is not whether you'll do the things your friends are doing. Like, you don't really have a choice. Like, that, you're going to do those things anyway. The choice you make is who your friends are. You get to make the choice at the beginning of the relationship. It's at the beginning of the relationship that you have that, like, decision nexus. You know, like, decision point, am I going to go left or am I going to go right? It's when you make the decision to be your, their friend, to be that close confidant, to, for them to be your best friend, for them to be your spouse, for them to be your, um, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your coworker, your boss. Like, these are all relationships. You choose them at the beginning, and then as you go along the path you chose, you start becoming like the person you chose. That's where the choice is. And so when we read the book of Proverbs, when we read the Bible, it is full with this one thing. It's like, the point is here. The point where you can have the biggest impact on your life is at the beginning of the relationship. When you just start dating someone, when you just start becoming somebody's friend, when you just start working here, that's your choice point. From then on out, it's like smooth sailing. You will naturally go the way that, of the people you're walking with. Once you choose your crowd, you have decided your destiny. The choices you make are just a natural repercussion. You've all heard it said this way, show me your friends and I will show you your future. And I'm not a fatalist. You know, I'm not saying like just give up, like who you chose, you're done. Your destiny is, is going that way forever. Obviously not. We're Christians. God changed our destiny. But this is what the Bible teaches this is what I've experienced. This is what I think every single one of us have experienced. The people we go with, we start acting like them. That's what the Bible teaches. Proverbs 18, verse 24, says this. There are friends who destroy each other. There are friends who destroy each other. But... A real friend sticks closer than a brother. Praise God, there is hope. 
You thought this was going to go all negative toward the end. It's not. Praise God, there is hope. There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. There is a friend who sticks closer than a sister. Yes, the crowd you choose affects and directs your life, but you can choose well. You can choose well. A good friend, a good spouse, a good boss can set you up for success. They make you better, and you make them better. When I'm working with Pastor Gary and Pastor Shelley throughout the week, they make me better, and I like to believe that sometimes I make them better too. Iron sharpens iron. That's what Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one friend sharpens another. You are making each other better by being in their presence. Their presence. It's like my friend Alan. We became better. We were totally different people. And yet when we came together, we were honed into a sharp instrument of war, of precision. And that's what God's looking for. You know, we start out... Uh, we all start out as mud, as clay, right? God, it says that in the beginning that God made Adam out of dirt. But we are being made better and better and better and sharpened and honed into these powerful tools of the kingdom. And yes, you do that by yourself. And yes, you absolutely do it in your relationship between God and yourself. So important. But almost just as important, if not as important, is your relationship with your friend with your Christian brothers and sisters. We are meant to sharpen each other, to make each other better. Something amazing happens when you surround yourself with people who are positive influences. You get better and they get better. You draw closer to God and you start making good decisions. You start being kinder. You start being more loving, more generous, selfless, peaceful, gracious you become your life becomes so filled with joy because the people you were surrounding with are filled with joy and not negativity as they as we are pursuing god together that is what i love about our church is i look at you all, all right now in the audience and i see you and you're like you're my friends like i appreciate you i love you and this is not you know pastor garen and i get up here and preach this is not a one-sided relationship. We're just, we have all this great wisdom and we're imparting it to you and you're all being sharpened. No, we've been sharpened by you as well. I've learned more about evangelism from Larry than I have from anybody else. I've learned more about prayer from B Brad and Barb than anybody else. I've learned more about everything. I've, I've learned more about, I wrote a list. I'm right, I'm finding it. <laughs> I've learned more about faith from Randy than anybody else. I've learned more about sacrifice from Scott and Stephanie than I have from anybody else. And I've learned more about courage from my wife, Sarah, than I have from anybody else. She's taught me to be bold, to realize that I have something inside of me that needs to be shared instead of smothered down like I did for my entire life. You see, when you partner with someone as a friend who is a good influence, a friend, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a pastor, a teacher, when you partner with people like this, they see you for who God wants you to be, not who you are. And they draw that out of you. You see, when, you, when something is being sharpened, when iron is sharpening iron, it's you're chipping pieces off. For something to be sharp, you have to shave metal off of it. You are exposing the true center. You are exposing who is the real person, who is Christian at his deepest core, who has God designed Christian to be, and you are all bringing him out so that I can be the best weapon for God's kingdom. And that is what we do for you. That is what we do for each other. That is the importance of the church. You're not good enough alone. You are a dull weapon. It doesn't matter how much time you spend with God. It doesn't. You can only reach your fullest potential if you are being continuously sharpened by God and by man, by people who are positive influences in your life as iron sharpens iron. 
so one friend sharpens another. So one spouse sharpens another. So one boss sharpens a coworker. Does that make sense? Now, I, I say that I have to make this, this, I have to say this, because when I mention spouses, you know, you can mention friends. It's like, okay, maybe I'm not with the best friends. Maybe I could change my crowd. If you are with your spouse, that is a lifetime commitment. And the, what I'm saying is there are people in this room who have not committed to that yet. Remember what I said at the beginning? There's a decision point at the beginning of the relationship. And then it follows. We believe in the church that God called man and woman to be together for life. Okay? So make a good decision. Those of you who have not been married or are not being married, make a good decision now because it will affect the course of your life. And it's the same with friends. It's the same with the, even the job you go to. Some of you go to jobs where the people are terrible. Let's just be frank. And they are affecting you. You become like that. You may not look like that on Sunday morning, but you look like that to your wife. You look like that to your husband. You're cursing, you're thrashing about, you're yelling at them, you're getting angry. I mean, I do too sometimes. My point is you have choices and you need to make ones that will bring you closer to God because God has something amazing for you and the church is a part of it. We want to be a part of it. We want to help you along. We want to help sharpen you into the best possible version of you that you can become. I want to see the best possible Nakai. I want to see the best possible Shelly. I want to see the best possible Stephanie and Leo and Esteban. We're sharpening each other. We're making each other so much better and I'm so stoked because I've seen, we've all seen change, transformation in you because of what Jesus does through you and what he's doing through us to sharpen you. Amen? Amen. Psalm 1, beginning of the book of Psalms, 1 verse 1, verse one, th- 1, verse one through 3 says, Oh, the joys... How blessed, oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted by the riverbank, bearing fruit, making progress, doing great things each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all that they do. Listen to what the word of the Lord is saying. Choose your friends wisely. You will prosper. Choose your friends wisely and you will be like a tree planted by the river bank, growing strongly and bearing fruit, producing good things for your earthly friends and family and for God's kingdom. The crowd I chose made me better. And that's my prayer for you is that you would choose a crowd who would make you better and you would make them better in turn. It's a two-sided street. Friends, coworkers, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, choose them based on their ability to lead them closer to Jesus and have the courage to to leave some friends behind, to leave some relationships behind because they don't lead you to Jesus. I'm not saying like abandon and cut off all of your friends if they're not Jesus followers. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to be in the world. Supposed to be in the world, not of the world. What I'm saying is there is a place in your life of deepest influence, your closest friends, whom you allow to impact you. A non-believer shouldn't be there. Keep them as your friends, but lead them to Jesus and then allow them to influence you. But don't abandon them. Please don't mishear me on that. We are called to bring all the world to Jesus. I'm just saying that place of greatest influence reserved for people who bring you closer to God. Amen. How many of you want to have friends like that? Have relationships like that? Yeah, me too. I mean, I could grow in this too. Like, I've chosen wrong, James. I want to be better at that too. We all have 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 a place to grow. So why don't you all stand to your feet Let's pray. Pray that God would help us. I just need help sometimes. Every head bowed, every eye closed. 
Jesus, we, we, just, we just see what your word says, and your word teaches us that it's, it's good to have friends that lead us to you. And so, Lord, I pray that you will provide for these men and women wonderful friends. If they're looking for a spouse, or if they're looking for a boyfriend or a girlfriend right now, Lord, I pray that you will draw into their life someone who draws them closer to you. There is no greater relationship, Lord. And Lord, I just, I pray you will give us the courage to step away from a bad relationship when it's not leading us to Christ. To not cut them off, but not give them that place of influence, of deepest influence in our lives. And Lord, help us, because these are hard decisions. Lord, you are our first friend. And so, Lord, we look to you for guidance, for wisdom, for encouragement. Bless these people as they seek to follow you. And I pray over every single one of them that, Lord, you see who they are at the center. And I pray that you will chip away every single thing that's not of them every single thing that's getting in the way of them being the most powerful, most productive, most, most amazing tool for God's kingdom that the world has ever seen. May Hope and Life Church be sharp. A sharp tool, a double-edged sword for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. And, you know, as I said before, Proverbs 18, verse 24 It says, there are friends who destroy each other, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And I believe that was fulfilled in Jesus. That verse, it applies to our life for friends, but its ultimate fulfillment was found in Jesus. He is our greatest friend. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, I just have a question. Is there anyone in here, in, in the room or online, who wants to put their faith in Jesus to say, Jesus, I want you to be my friend? to stick closer closer to me like a brother or a sister. Is there anyone who wants to put their faith in Jesus? Please raise your hand. Yeah, I see those hands. Yep. I see that hand too. And that one. And if you're online, God sees your hand too. Don't be afraid to raise it to him. All right, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And in this prayer, we are going to, like, how do you follow Jesus? You turn from your sins. You turn to Jesus. Make him your friend, your brother, and your Lord. And you follow him. It's a decision point right here. It's a decision nexus. You can choose, am I going to be friends with God and go this way? Or am I going to be friends with the world and go that way? And that's what this is right now. It's a choice at the beginning. So let's pray. You can, let's all repeat after me. But if you are, if you're praying this for the first time, don't pray it to me, pray it to God. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I turn from my sins. And I turn to you and ask you to be my friend, to be my brother, to be my Savior and my Lord. And Lord, I choose to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, you have, you have a friend who is closer than a brother who will guide you through thick and thin. And you have us, your brothers and your sisters, who are committed as a church to sharpen you into the best tool possible. And part of that, if you are new to our church, if you're new to following Jesus, please stop by the Following Jesus booth in the back. I'll be there. We have a book for you. We have a course for you. It's all free. And it's just seven steps on how to follow Jesus well. Would you come meet with me back there and we'll get you set up with that. All right, we love you guys. God bless. Thank you, Pastor Christian. I love that. I love the message because it's so practical. It just applies to our lives. Choose your friends wisely and you will prosper. I thought that was just, just such a great, take that away, would you? Take that with you. Choose your friends wisely, and you will prosper. That, that is so good. If you filled out a Connect card, 
would you please just drop it in the offering box in the back? I appreciate that. And if you are interested in membership, you are invited to come and find out what it's about. The lunch will be right back there in the lobby where the tables are set up in just a few minutes once we get the food set out and everything. So in about five minutes, we'll do that. And speaking of which, if a couple of you could help me set up a couple of tables, which are hidden right here in this room, we're going to set them up right here. That would, that would help afterwards. Are there a couple people who would just help? Okay, there's one. There's a couple. Awesome. Great. If you guys, that'd be awesome if you could do that. Everybody else, we'll see you next week. God bless you. Have a great week. See you on Wednesday night for prayer gathering at 6. God bless you.